In the name of the Lord Jesus, Jesus
the altar and they've been with strange flesh. When there's strange flesh, it could be men or women. Hello, somebody. When there's strange flesh, come on, they could be doing all kinds of religious acts. When there's strange flesh, flesh it'd be strange doctrine. Oh, Jesus didn't already come back. He ain't waiting for him to come back. I don't know about you, but I'm waiting for him to come back. So the Bible says, he said, if you don't get them together, God will kill them in you because you can't bring filth into the presence of God. You can bring it into the church, but you can't bring it into the presence. Oh, can I get a witness in the house? And so when they did not obey, God struck them. Amen. And then when the news got back to the Father, he fell over and died. Yeah. Why? Because it's up to us to stand up for the truth. Yeah. It's up to us to preach the truth yeah. and not be afraid to preach the truth. Yeah. And not, okay, if I got to go to jail, my good the king went to jail. Amen. Caesar Simon's went to jail. Amen. What's wrong with you? You know that, God? What's wrong with you? Just got a revelation. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to give you some knowledge here right now. The Bible says back in the days of, of, of uh, who was it? Queen Esther. Amen. That the king and people set rules. Amen. Because they knew the saints wasn't going to do it. So people are creating laws because they know we ain't going to bow down. They know we ain't going for that mess. Hello, somebody. That's why they make the laws. They make the laws because they want you to break them so they can lock you up. Hello, somebody. Oh, but I remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, we ain't going to be careful with what we say. They said, the God that we serve is able to deliver us. If he chooses to do it, fine. Even if he don't, we know he's able. Do you know your God is able? shall we obey man? Yeah. See, we could we get to the place where being a cute Christian ain't going to work. You're going to have to be saved. You're going to have to be saved to the bone. Come on, Zerai. Tell somebody, say, you got to be saved to the bone. That means you got to be saved if you don't have a pot in the window. Hello, somebody. Because the day is coming when all you have is the word of God. And see, you have to watch out. People are getting rid of their Bibles little by little, and they're having all their Bibles on the computer and don't know they can push one button, and now you can't get to your Bible. Come on. That's why the Bible says, hide the word in my heart that I might not sin against him. I'll talk to me in the house. Get the word in you. So Elijah, amen, so the first thing, Elijah said, I'm going here. And he said, Elijah, you, you wait over here. And Elijah said, uh, uh I'm going with you. Wherever you go. And the Bible says, when he went to Bethel, which is the place of God. Now, here, here's the trip. Here's the trip. He goes to the place of God, my sister. And in the place of God, there's negative talk. Okay. Okay. In the place of God, the prophets, or the Bible says the sons of the prophets, yes. they wasn't even the prophets. Amen. They was the sons of the prophets. Yes. People are always speaking what they think God is going to say. Uh-huh. Don't know they're the sons of the prophets. They ain't even been to school. They don't have no knowledge. They haven't had no experience with God, but trying to tell you, oh, why are you, why are you hanging out with him? You know he's about to die. Hallelujah. You, might, you, might, you, you know he's about to die. Why don't you just leave him? Uh, come on, just like when you have a young preacher. Are you following the young preacher? No, he's young. Come on, son. Uh, it does not matter. Josiah was eight years old uh, when he began to reign. And the Bible said his father was wicked and his grandfather was wicked. But at eight years old, he pulled down all the idols in the high places and brought the country back to God. So the scripture says, the young prophets came to him, said, you need to leave him. He's about to die. And what did he say? Shh, shut up. Some of y'all need to shut this negativity up around you. Because the negativity happened at the door of the church. Yes. Come on, somebody. Come on. Yes. I wouldn't go to church. and I, I wouldn't say, shut up. I don't want to hear it. That's right. He told him, hush, hold the priest. 
I don't want to hear all that gossip and I don't want to hear all that talk. Why? Because you're messing up my spirit. He said, I'm going somewhere. Don't somebody say, I'm going somewhere. I don't care what the doctor say. I don't care what you say. I'm going somewhere. Uh, just shake three hands and say, I'm going somewhere. I don't need what you got to say because the God that I serve is a good God. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm, I know I'm preaching. Hello, somebody. And so the Bible says that he went to Bethel. And Bethel represents the place of God. But a lot of stuff happened in Bethel. And then the next place he went, he said, well, I got to go over here to Jericho now. And so what I'm looking at is the progression here. First, I go to Bethel. I go to the presence of God. I go to the place of God. I go to where God dwells. I, I go to where God is giving miracles and victories. But now I'm going to Jericho. <laughs> and what does Jericho represent? A place where you need to hush your mouth and let the Lord fight the battle for you. If you hold your peace and let the Lord fight the battle, victory shall be yours. Can I get a witness in the house? What was unique about Bethel? I mean, what was unique about Jericho? It was the city that when the children of Israel came over the, 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 the Jordan River, they came over the river, they came over the Jordan, the first thing they came to, amen, was a place called Jericho. And it was a walled up city. You done got baptized. You got the Holy Ghost. You've been serving God. But now you done run into a wall. You said, wait a minute, God. I got saved, but look like I'm running into a wall. Running into a wall with my landlord. Running into a wall with my job. My finances running into a wall. Can I get a witness in the house? But the Lord said, you already been to Bethel. You already been in my presence. Because you're in my presence, you got a double portion of the anointed. Talk to somebody here. All you gotta do is get into the presence. And the I just got a revelation. I just got a revelation. When you go into the presence, then how you know that you have a double portion? How do you know you have a double portion? You have to be tested. The only way you're going to know that there's any increase in your power, you've got to have the test. As soon as they come over the Jordan, here is Jericho all walled up. And God, they say, God, in order for us to get the promise, we got to get into Jericho. But it's all walled up. It's a fortress. Hello, somebody. But well, God said, this is what I want you to do. Number one, I want you to claim the land.
watch this. Now they had got all that victory in Jericho. They knew about the history of it. They saw the victory. But here comes somebody. You need to stop following him. He about to die. What did he say? Shh. I don't need to hear that right now. Uh -huh. You don't need to contaminate my spirit. It may not have worked for you, but I got a history of it working for us. Can I get a witness in the house? I don't know about you, but I didn't go to the presence of God. So I got a double portion of the anointing. You may not have got healed, but that ain't my testimony. I'm the little bit shocked because I've been in the presence of God. Can I talk to somebody here? When you've been in the presence, you'll be able to do things that other folk can't do. He said, they that know their God shall do great exploits. They shall leap over a wall. They shall run through a troop. What's impossible to men is possible with God. I told him, hush, I don't want to hear it. That's right. So finally, they walked over the Jordan. <laughs> the Jordan means we're going into our promise. Tell somebody, I'm walking into my promise. And guess what else? Guess what else the Bible said? It said about 50 of the prophets sat on the other side and watched just them two go over so while you complaining, you watching me walk over. While you talking about what ain't gonna work, tell us about it. I'm walking into my promise. Oh, can I talk to somebody? While you complaining, I'm praising. Come on. I'm the hills here. And I'm having a conversation with the prophet of God. I don't care if he's getting ready to go. God got a backup plan. Oh, can I talk to somebody here? I felt that they all were done. I said, I'm almost done. Did you feel that thing? I just felt that shoot through my body. Went, yes. So they talking. They kept the communication. See, one of the things that the devil wants you to do is cut off from the church. He just want to cut you off from church. He don't care if you go to the social club. He don't care if you go to the rotary club. He don't care if you go to the Boy Scouts. Just don't go to church. Because when I go to church, I'm going to hear a word from the Lord yeah. that's going to speak to my situation. Yeah. God's going to tell me what to do. Yeah. I, can I get a witness in the house? Yeah. So they went over Jordan, and all the crowd watched them go over. Yeah. And what did they watch? But well, we told him. He wouldn't even listen to us. Right. We told him the man was leaving. But he wouldn't listen to us. Why didn't he listen? Because he was going after the double portion. Y'all yeah. stuck in the one portion. I'm going after two. Yeah. So if I go after two, I got to go the extra mile. I got to do what you won't do. Come on, somebody. If I'm going to get a double portion, I got to do what you won't do. Come on, somebody. I got to go where you don't want to go. I got to cross a Jordan that you don't want to cross. You watching me cross. Come on, somebody. And then as he went over there. I have to stop because I don't know about y'all, but while I'm talking, the Lord talks in my ear. And he stopped and he told me to tell you this. He said, when he was over there by himself, him and Elijah was talking. And what happened is, because his test was to stop following the prophet of God. Because it wasn't the prophet that he was following. It was God in the prophet. See, you're not following a man. You're following God in the man. Or can I talk to somebody in here? So when he's a man of God, that's what you follow. You're not following a man, you're following God. So now look what happens. All these people looking now. They said, we told him he's about to die. But he don't know. So Elijah turns around. They over here by themselves. Private conversation. See, the Lord want to take you to a place where he can tell you stuff that everybody else don't know. You looking stupid and dumb to them, but they don't know the conversation that you've been having with God. Uh-huh. Come on, somebody. Jesus looked stupid hanging on the cross in a borrowed grave. Come on, somebody, but he rose from the dead again. 
They tried to stomp out the church, but the more they tried to stomp it out, 3,000 people got saved at the first altar the call. Saints don't die. Elijah turns around because God honors faithfulness. And you think God has not watched what you were doing. You think God has just overlooked all your faithfulness and your sacrifices. Amen. God, God says stop complaining because I have not forgotten your labor of love. But when it's my time to reward you, I'm going to blow your mind. So he turns. See, if you want God to ask you what do you want, you stay faithful to God when everybody else is telling you to stop and don't go and don't move forward. When everybody's speaking to you, tell them, shh, bless your mouth. I don't want to hear it. Come on, somebody. Well, it didn't work for me. Well, I ain't you. Come on, somebody. So he's having a conversation with the prophet. And all of a sudden, the prophet turns to him and says, listen, I've been trying to get rid of you three times. I tried to stop you three times and you wouldn't stop. He said, boy, what do you want? He said, I'm telling you what I want. He said, I saw you raise the dead. I saw you do all the miracles. I saw you call down fire from heaven. I saw you do all these many mighty things. And he said, I want to do double what you do. I want to do double what you do. He said, boy, you crazy. You are out of your kind of picking mind. That's a hard thing. Yeah. Nevertheless, Nevertheless, if you see me go up, if you see me go up, how did you will be granted what you ask? Or can I talk to somebody in the house? And all of a sudden, while they was talking, the Bible said that the chariots of fire, somebody say fire. Somebody say fire. It wasn't chariots of water, it was chariots of fire. God said, I baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. When God baptizes, ain't dead, it's alive. Come on, somebody. He said, I baptize you with what? Fire. The fire chariots come, and Elijah is taken up. And what does he holler? My Lord, my Lord, I see the chariots of fire. I see the angels. Why did he holler that out? Because he said, I want you to know in detail that I saw you go up. Now, come on, somebody. Sometimes you got to let those folks know I saw it. I heard that. Come on, somebody. Here's the details of what I saw and what I heard. Come on, come on. Shut that. Can I talk to you in the house? I'm almost done. And so he saw him go up and he hollered it out. Come on, somebody. And the Bible said when he looked, he was gone. For a second there, he said, that booger. <laughs> he asked me what I wanted. I told him I want a double portion of his anointing. I want a double portion of his power and his mantle. And he got caught up out of here and forgot all about me. <laughs> Sometimes you think God has forgot all about you. Oh, yeah. But he ain't forgot you. What you need to do is look around. Your miracle is laying on the ground next to you. Can I get a witness in the house? Praise the Lord. This is Bishop Ernest Johnson, and I want you to get a copy of my new book, The Revelation of Jesus' Name, just for your love gift this month of helping me take apostolic television around the world. This is a must-read book. Just some of the chapters I want to share with you is the history of baptism. I want to share that with you. Baptism without repentance, the purpose of baptism, and is baptism really necessary? What if you already been baptized? If you would like to get those questions answered in your life, get my new book, The Revelation of Jesus' Name, just for supporting us and helping us take apostolic television around the world. Get your monthly love gift of the book, The Revelation of Jesus' Name, for a love gift of $10 or more to help us continue to turn the world upside down. Get yours today.
Praise the Lord. This is Bishop Ernest Johnson, and I have a very special offer for you. I want you to get a copy of my new book, I'm a Faithful Tither, Why Am I Still Broke? Find out in the pages of these books as we discuss sowing and reaping, as we discuss giving, as we discuss tithing, and the most important thing we talk about in this book is the Joseph Principle, how to be a faithful steward over the blessings that God has given you. Log on to our website today and request the book, I'm a Faithful tither why am I still broke call a prayer counselor right now and say Bishop I want that book I'm a faithful tither why am I still broke and God will give you the answers of how to prosper even after he pours the blessings out on you get your copy today Praise the Lord, this is Bishop Ernest Johnson inviting you to come to a miracle move of God this Sunday morning at the Jesus is the Answer Apostolic Church. We're located at 25100 South Normandy Avenue in Harbor City, California. Come on out if you need healing, you need deliverance, you need to be saved, you need to be baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost. I want to invite you to come on out to the Jesus is the Answer Apostolic Church. 25100 South Normandy Avenue in Harbor City, California. Join us this Sunday morning at 11 a.m. And Bible study is Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Come on out and we'll see you there. Praise the Lord. This is Bishop Ernest Johnson. And for over 30 years, I've preached about it. I've talked about it. I've testified about it. But now I've got it available on DVD. That's right. I've got the message, Heaven, Hell, and the Lake of Fire. And I want you to have it. It's about my true out-of-body experience when I was 18 years old and I was taken into the pit of hell. And I stayed there for two hours. Hell is in the center of this earth. And I want you to get the description of what happened when I went down there and I touched the walls of hell and even people that I knew that was in hell I was trying to pull out. It's so much detail that I just can't share with you right now but I want you to get this and then a year later I was caught up into heaven into the third heaven into Jesus throne room and he instructed me and prophesied to me and told me many great things to come and they have come to pass and finally how God saved me from the lake of fire. So I want you to get your copy of this great DVD today and help keep apostolic television going around the world. Our store address is on the screen right now. You can go there, amen, and pay through PayPal with your credit card, checking account, or whatever, any kind of way you want to pay for it, and we'll ship it out to you within seven days. So get your copy today of Heaven, Hell, and the Lake of Fire, and you will be blessed. Jesus is the way.